I'm so powdery. Hey guys, it's Ishani, aka Total Makeup Junkie 101. So today I have a really requested review on the semi-new Hourglass Modernist Eyeshadow Palette. Hourglass released, I believe, five or six shades of their new eyeshadow palette, and I picked up one. And the reason I only picked one up is because Hourglass hasn't been getting a whole lot of good reviews on this particular product. Did that sentence even make sense? You guys know what I mean. This product hasn't been getting love like a lot of other Hourglass products do. I saw these at my local Sephora store. I swatched all of the palettes that they had and I picked the one that I liked the best. The shade I ended up coming home with was Obscura. And I did talk about this in a recent Sephora haul, which is why I got so many requests to actually do a review on it. So let's start off with the basics. This is what the palette looks like. It comes in the same overall compact as the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette or the Ambient Lighting Blush Palette. It is just a little bit smaller. You are getting five grams total in this product and that is with all five of the shadows. So technically you're getting one gram per shadow, which is very small. A standard MAC eyeshadow comes with 1.5 grams of product, so this is quite a bit smaller. The price on this palette is probably the thing that kills. It is a $58 palette. $58 for five shadows at only one gram a piece and particularly at the quality that these are, I don't think it's worth it. As I said, Hourglass released I believe six different variations on this palette. I think there's six or seven of them. Um, but all of them are relatively neutral. You're not getting any bright, incredibly, you know, crazy colors or really, really dark, smoky colors. All of them are fairly neutral. There is one palette that leans a little bit more purple. There's one that leans a little bit more green, but they're all kind of in the earth tone. This palette, Obscura, is the darkest, more neutrally palette. This palette definitely doesn't lean too warm, but it also doesn't lean too cool, which is why I decided to get it. I also liked this palette because I think it has a relatively good mix of mattes and shimmers in it. A lot of the palettes have maybe one shimmer and four mattes. This is one of the palettes that has two shimmers. The center shade is shimmery and this last one here in the corner is shimmery. And then these three shades here are matte. So let me start off with the things that I like about this palette. I like the packaging. I think it's nice and small, sleek, easy to transport. I think it looks cute in the actual packaging. I do kind of like this sort of wavy pattern that it has. And overall, I do like the colors that they chose to put, at least in this particular palette. I think all five of the shades work well together to come up with a look. That's pretty much all I love about it. What do I not love about it? Um, I don't love the price. I don't love that you're only getting one gram per shadow. I don't like how all of the shadows kind of go together. You can see all five of the shadows are in one pan. I don't really like that because that makes it harder to, you know, when you're in one color, the fallout from that color can get into the color next to it and then it kind of tweaks the effect you get from the next color. And this is particularly a problem, the whole fallout getting into the shadows around it because the number one thing I hate about this product is it is incredibly powdery. Now the shadows do have pigment to them. So that's another thing that I do like. They are pigmented, but because they are so crumbly, fallout prone, it's like, it's not a creamy shadow, it's just powder. It's really hard to explain. It's almost like when you dip your brush into this, it almost turns into like a loose powder. You guys will see that in the demo I have coming up. I did do a very brief tutorial demo, show you how it applies with the look I have on right now. This eye look is using only shadows from this palette. And I think the overall look turned out nicely, but I don't think you could get a lot of variation in this palette. 
palette. I think the two matte browns end up looking very similar once they're applied. Honestly, the standout color in this palette is this center shade right here, which is essentially what I have packed all over my lid. I think that is a very, very beautiful color. This one here on the end didn't show up too well. The highlight is just kind of a subpar highlight. I think for $58, you should expect to get a lot more product and a lot more quality than you actually do. So before I share my final thoughts with you guys, I am going to jump into a demo where I showed you guys how I used this palette to achieve this eye look. So let's jump into it. So I've already primed my eyes with my Urban Decay Anti-Aging Eyeshadow Primer Potion. And now I'm gonna go in with my Maybelline Color Tattoo in the shade Matte Brown. And I was debating if I wanted to put an eyeshadow base down for this test. I was definitely gonna do a primer because I always do a primer but I wasn't sure about a base but I decided to do it just because I normally put a base down with any eyeshadow that I use so to not put it down in testing this palette I felt like it would be a little unfair. Now we're gonna jump right into the eyeshadow palette. I'm going to go in with this middle color here. It's a really really pretty um, metallic coppery brown and I'm gonna take it on a flat shader brush. Definitely quite powdery. I don't know if you guys can tell, but when I tap my brush in it, it's it, it's powdery. Let's go ahead and just get that on the lid. Oh, that has a lot more pigment than I was expecting. I don't really know what look I'm going to do with this palette quite yet. I'm just kind of going with it. I want to use all five of the colors, so let's just wing it. That did kick up a ton of powder in the pan as you guys can see here but it does look really really pretty on the eyes. I just wiped off the same brush and I'm gonna go into the other shimmery color in this palette which is this slightly darker coppery brown here and I'm going to take that on the outer part here. This one isn't showing up as well as that other color, but that's probably because it's a little bit more similar to my skin tone, so it's blending in more. And once again, the powderiness is beyond belief. So I'm gonna go in with a brush like this. This is a Sedona Lace EB09. It kind of looks like the MAC 217. And I'm gonna go into this shade right here, which is the second one. It is a matte, kind of like a neutral brown color. I'm gonna go ahead and take that into the crease area. This is a nice crease color. It's showing up nicely. I don't think you can blend these shadows a lot before they start looking muddy because I feel like my eye look is beginning to look muddy already. All right, we're gonna go back into the palette. You can see how I know I keep saying this, but look at the powderiness. It's ridiculous. Okay, I'm gonna go into this other matte dark brown. This one is more of like a purpley brown. It almost looks plum compared to the first one that I used. I'm gonna go ahead and take this into this outer part here. I'm not doing any type of precise look with this palette. I just really wanted to use all five of the colors and see if I could actually get five different colors to show up on my eye, which I don't really think is happening. I mean, the color is a pretty standard, like, purpley brown, but it's the fact that when I start just doing these strokes to blend it, it's like muddying with all of the other colors. It's not blending so much as it's muddying, if that makes sense. I hate that you have to blow the powder away. If I didn't do that, I would have dark powder in this light color, which I already have dark powder on top of this light color, but I'm gonna go in with this light color and highlight. So we're just gonna take it a little bit under the brow. You have to be sure to tap off the powder. Let me show you. You get it on your brush and you have to tap it off. And can you see all of that? And if you didn't tap off the brush and make a mess in your actual palette, all of that fallout would be on your face. There is the completed eyeshadow look. I'm going to go ahead and do liner and mascara and come back to you in a bit. I finished up my eye look with some liner, mascara, and of course I finished up my face. So 
overall, what do I think of this palette? If you guys weren't paying attention through the rest of this video, I am pretty disappointed. Hourglass has some fantastic products that I am a huge fan of. I really love their ambient lighting blushes. Their ambient lighting powders are pretty good too. I love their lipsticks, their lip glosses, their matte liquid lipsticks. They have a lot of products that are just really, really great. For Hourglass to release this type of eyeshadow palette that is not unique in color, the shadows are very, very, very powdery. I mean, if you think the Lorac Pro eyeshadows in those Pro palettes are powdery, you are going to hate, hate these shadows. I don't see myself reaching for this product a whole lot just because of the powderiness and just the fact that they're not unique to the point where I feel like I have to put up with the powderiness. I mean, I have colors like this in so many other brands and I can achieve a very similar eye look with products that are so much better. So do I recommend this palette? No. Now do keep in mind I am only reviewing the Obscura palette. I do not have any of the other palettes, but from what I swatched in the store and from what I could tell from other people's reviews, it's the same quality. They're all very, very powdery, and while they are relatively pigmented, it's not worth it to put up with the powderiness. That is pretty much all I have to say on this product. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was what you guys were hoping out of it, and I hope the demo helped you guys out because I do feel like seeing the products in action is a lot more helpful than me just talking about it. That's it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys on Monday. Bye! And then this is what the blush looks like. Now just like the dual intensity eyeshadows, you do get very, very wearable and it's matte. And I mean, come on, look at that embossing on the 